Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another lesson in Tinkercad. Today, we're going to make an adapter so a fan works with a laser enclosure. So let's get cracking. All right, everybody. So it works like this. When you get an enclosure, they send you one of these. You can push it through, and then you'll attach your hose to it so it'll vent. Now, what I have done, I have saved all my CPU coolers from back in the day. This was on an old AMD. I'm gonna real quickly make a mount in Tinkercad so we can put this inside and actually have assisted venting on our enclosure. Now step one is to remove the heat sink. Mine uses standard Phillips screws. Yours may be attached some other way, but once you get this taken off, we can get some measurements and start actually assembling. All right, friends, so fun fact, sometimes even teachers get frustrated. Uh, I went and grabbed the Dremel tool to cut this off because I was having a hard time unscrewing it, but now I've got a fan we can play with. So now that we've got our fan, let's move to Tinkercad. If you've never used Tinkercad before, I choose sign in with Google. Now that we're here, I'm going to switch to 3D designs. I'm going to hit the plus sign and I'm going to make a brand new 3D design. I design everything in metric. If you have your set in inches, it's real easy to switch. If you prefer inches, that is fine. I just like working with metrics. This is a good time to find a measuring tool. I've got this one from Harbor Freight. Let's power it on. And this little fan is about 70 millimeters on a side. That's what you need to know to start the bracket. Let me show you how to make a cool 70 millimeter project. What we're going to do is bring out a cube and we're going to make the hole. This is so slick, you're going to hold shift and stretch a handle. I don't care what number you get to, but immediately type the box, type your 70 and press enter. So that is a 70 millimeter hole. Friends, we're going to add the second cube, but it'll be the solid cube. When you bring this out, no, you could have switched it right over here from solid to a hole, but we want a solid. We're going to hold shift, stretch it to Crazyville, and instead of 70, we're going to type 76. That gives us three millimeters on each side. When we press enter, it snaps in every direction. We can now make this smaller. I'm going to just for giggles type 15 right now, and we're going to align these. If you select the two, click on the align button or the letter L. I'm going to click the red one to make it the boss. There are three little circles right here. We want the one in the middle. This is the view cube, friends. If you look at it from this side, we want the one in the middle, bam. And then over here, you'll notice the three up and down. We're using the one on the bottom. That's perfect. When you hit group, bam, it cuts it out. And now we have got a frame for our cute little fan. Now, friends, remember we're inserting it into this. So once again, grab your measuring tool, make sure it's zero. This time we're going to use it the opposite way. And the inside of this area is about 92.7. I'm going to just do 92. I think that's going to be snug enough. You'll need to learn what works best with your printer to figure it out. So watch this. Cool tool called the tube. We need to use the radius to get this. So the radius of 90 is 45. So 46 would be 92. So let's type 46.5, which gets us close to 93. This may be snug, but it may be perfect. This all depends on your printer. I'm going to show you how to do a test print in a minute because you always want to test before you print the final one. We're going to slide the sides all the way to 64 so it's round. And let's do a line again. When we do a line, click on the red one, say center and center just like I taught you a moment ago. Notice friends, those are awful close. And that's because check it out, this can almost be rammed in here. I could seriously grab the Dremel, grind this off and just stuff it in, but doggone it, I wanna make an adapter and I want you to know how to as well. Real quickly, I'm gonna change my wall thickness to two. That'll make this print a little faster. Friends, I'm gonna raise the cutout up. You can do it with this awesome handle. I'm gonna hit D to drop it down. Let me show you another fancy way I'm going to set the nudge to five millimeters. And if you hold control and tap the up arrow, boom, there's a five millimeter nudge and then another five millimeter nudge. Friends, at this point, we have got a frame that'll hold the fan. I'm going to check the height I chose for this. Instead of 15, I think I'm going to try 10. And I'm going to keep this at 10 for how far it slides in. Now, before I actually print these, I want to do a test. So I'm gonna do Control D to make a copy. I'm gonna make this two millimeters high and let's export this and send it to the printer. 
there's my export I'm gonna do STL I'm gonna call this the Fent frame friends I am slicing in Kira I'm gonna send this to my a8 plus there is my vent frame I like to use 0.3 millimeters I'm using 260 for my filament bed speed of 75 skirt I always do five on the outside so I can tell how well it's gonna print let's save it to removable disk and as you can see it's only gonna take five minutes all right everybody so let's see where we're at this is the little ring that I printed Ooh, that fits in there perfect so I'm totally happy with that real quickly now I'm gonna print a small version of this so since I'm happy with that friends I'm gonna do control D on this let's bring it over here D is for drop I'm gonna make it two millimeters high as well that way it prints nice and quick I do not care that they're all connected because all I'm gonna do is export the single shape so there's my export STL. I'm gonna call this one vent frame and I'm gonna put an SQ after it because this is the square one. Let's save it, put it on the A8 and let's see what we get. All right, so I took that over on an SD card and got it printed. Notice 14 minutes for actually what was a smaller shape, but what it is is it has to stop as it goes around those corners. When I'm doing those cylinders, it just never stops. So I think that's why the elapsed time is only about half just sharing because it's the first time I noticed it all right friends so I'm not sure I care that there are these gaps here but if you do let me show you how you could get rid of them so I'm gonna do W for work plane and I'm gonna set it on this edge that means the next part that I add is gonna land right there now you could just bring out a cylinder I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna stretch this like we did before I'm gonna type the number 90 and press enter I'm gonna make it smooth by sliding the sides out let's do shift select and let's move it over to that shape it's crazy tall but don't let that bug you will adjust it in a moment so that gets out to the edge it's not exact but it's close I'm gonna shrink this instead from 85 to one millimeter so that way I've got a little bit of a lip if I put a bevel of two and I put segments of five that smooths that out a little bit if we want to make this line up perfect we could type the number but I'm gonna just change this nudge to one and I'm gonna do alt shift so we're gonna go around the middle and I'm gonna just bring it out to the spot I like I think that's pretty groovy I'm gonna set this distance back here to two now and I'll show you why in a second that's just gonna give us more of a grip here friends we're gonna cut this out really really slick First, I want you to click on this item and I want you to lock it. Now I want you to do control D to make a second one. We're gonna take the second one and let's click on it and unlock it. Let's lift it up so we can see which is which, you know, cause we wanna make sure we got the right one. And we are going to ungroup it. We're gonna delete the red piece now friends if we click on this we've already got the work plane in place if you hit d to drop and do shift select it cuts out that hole and it fits perfect now we've got the supports on the outside there are little gaps here in these corners but i just don't think that's worth adjusting i can take my shape now and group it and as long as this part fits in the test that is ready for 3d printing all right everybody so moment of truth time here is our frame and how close is it oh it is close but i think it's just a little bit too snug those corners are just too hard to fit in so what i'm gonna do watch this i'm gonna ungroup our final one and i'm gonna ungroup again and then I'm gonna take this I'm gonna switch to 0.1 millimeters I'm gonna do alt shift and see how this corner was 71 I'm gonna do alt shift and I'm gonna move it out and it went to 76 but I'm gonna type 72 and press enter so it just makes that a little wider notice the spacing is still perfect I'm going to shift select click click let's group those it lines up good I need to do the same fix in here so I'm gonna click on this orange piece and I'm gonna ungroup it I'm gonna do 72 again here alt shift 72 and press enter and then shift select and group 
to cut that back out. I'm not going to print those parts again. I'm just going to group it all. Now, friends, if you care about your corners, you might want to add supports. I like to do that with a cone. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to shrink the cone and I'm going to type the number five for this size. I like these corners like this. Then I'm going to simply stretch it up and nudge it into place. I've got a one millimeter nudge so I can get it close. When I get it in place, I'm going to just shrink this down so it's the right height. Currently, it's 14. I know it should be something like 10. I'm going to take the top radius. I'm going to make it 1. That should work pretty darn awesome. And then I can clip it off with clippers when I'm finished. Control D. I'm going to do Shift Nudge to move it to the other side. That goes 10 times as far. When I'm happy with those two, I'm going to click to make sure I've got them selected separate. Otherwise, it'll memorize the movement we just did. And then if we do Control D, I can do Shift Nudge to move them to the other side and get them exactly where I want. F is Fit View. We can zoom in, and I think that is going to be perfect. Friends, I have named it Vent Frame, so now we can grab it all, and we can hit Export. STL, and it was only the selected objects. I'm gonna put it in my STL folder and I want it to be named as vent frame. So let's import that into Cura and see how long it's gonna take for the real project. Those little two millimeter ones were kind of entertaining. I'm sure this is gonna take a lot longer. Yep, an hour and 19 minutes. Looks good though, so I'm gonna hit save to disk, hit eject. I'll take it to the printer and I'll show it to you when it's all done. Friends, it is a little more than an hour later. I have got my part. You can see it turned out pretty darn crisp. Uh, slides in here like a dream. Really, really happy with that. This side is a little bit larger than I wanted. I'm just gonna hot glue it and then I'll adjust if I ever print it again. I do have a problem though. This is the side that is gonna receive it. And are you ready for this? It's a tiny bit bigger. There is a lip in here that I did not account for. So I'm just gonna hot glue it on this side as well. I've got my parts adapted. Now I'm gonna find a power supply and show you how it all fits together. Alrighty friends, so let me give you a tour of what we've got here. Of course, this is the ComGrow Z1 and this is the large enclosure. It is lit. You can see we got the camera module. That test is coming up soon. And here is our cute little fan totally installed. You can see I got that all screwed in. It is pulling air out and it is plugged into a silly adapter. As you can see, I've got the wires coming through and then I'm actually holding it together with one of my 3D prints. If you've never seen this before, it prints in place and when you squeeze it, the jaws open. So that's how I'm able to hold the wire on the connector. How cool is that? And then it is exiting a window via that piece of styrofoam that came with one of my laser cutters. All right, friends. So today we are going to play with some acrylic plates. Uh, this is stuff I got a while ago. White and clear. So we will see if this will work. Already taped up. It does have a hole in it. So I'm going to try and avoid that. And let's see what we can make. So friends, I have loaded my Let's Get Cracking keychain. I like that. I am going to do File Save As since this is being switched from wood to acrylic. Let's put ACR after that so I know that it is my acrylic project. Let's check our settings. First, it is right now set to do two passes, speed of 600, 90 power. I'm actually gonna bump that up to three for going through this acrylic. I also like that it's going to take the smell out through the vents, so I think that's going to be cool. And let's check this, we're doing 3330 and one pass. I think I'm going to stay with that. I am going to shrink this all though because of the size of that acrylic. So I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard. So I'm going to hold control as I drag and that way it scales at the same amount. And now it's going to be way inside this 70 by 25 box. But I think it's going to be cool for what we're doing. I am going to move it up to this corner. Let's switch to move. And I'm going to nudge the laser into place. Don't forget shift nudge goes 10 times as far. I'm going to bring my material a little closer to save some time. I just quickly use some scotch tape to get that paper back where I want it to be. 
instead of absolute cord coordinates I'm gonna switch that to current position let's do some shift nudge to get this back where I want it to be let's come over this way shift nudge and let's try that frame again now that we've got it set with the origin like I expected all right it does not quite fit we're gonna nudge that to the left let's try frame again I'm gonna do a couple of control nudges remember those are micro nudges let's frame it one more time I think that is pretty groovy friends I'm gonna close the cover and let's light this up alright so we are grabbing our goggles and let's make something magical all right so that was pretty fast let's do a couple shift nudges let's look inside the box once again I do want to emphasize I'm glad I'm venting the fumes it does not smell good in here um, as we look at this it did not cut through now this is clear so I'm not totally surprised by that it did try and go around the edges like I can feel there's a groove there I'm gonna do it from the other side let's test this one more time and see if it works on this side I have changed it to four passes 400 speed and let's see what we get this time all right friends let's open her up all right friends I want to emphasize zero smell with this thing closed it is holding everything in fantastic all right friends so as you can see I mark it but we cannot cut it it's clear I kind of thought that was going to be the case but I wanted to test acrylic in the new enclosure and oh my gosh totally traps the smells and that is absolutely fantastic so my friends let's quickly wrap up we learned how to make a cool adapter in tinkercad using simple shapes we 3d printed it and we took it out to the laser enclosure and oh my gosh we learned that the large laser enclosure is absolutely awesome being totally sealed with the bottom and that fan vented all those nasty exhausts out of the house so i'm not getting scolded by the family and that my friends is always an added bonus friends if you are interested in the comgrow enclosure there will of course be a link below just a heads up you can also visit my website hlmodtech.com i have got a tab dedicated to the lasers i've tested you can check out all the videos and of course there are links to the website as well of course friends there will be many more videos to come and if you enjoyed this video please give it a like please also hit that share button so more people can learn about hl mod tech of course if you got a question comment or suggestion add it down below and if you haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for smash that subscribe button and last but not least hit that notification bell if you'll be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me hl mod tech thanks for watching have a great day